Oh, hello. I'm Big Bad Baragon. But some of you, most of you, know me as Herbert Golding. And this is my documentary. I was born and raised in upstate New York's most infamous war zone, Newburgh, New York. But upon my teenage years, my family came upon some money. And one of the first things they did was they relocated my education to the peaceful suburban area of Pennsylvania. So today, I want to share with you, my friends and fans, about the essential role that going to this school played in my life, in my career, and in everything I do. When I first came to this school, I was 16 years old, starting 11th grade. At the time, I had very few aspirations. White woman, white people, white females. I didn't expect to get much more out of it than that. But what I did get was a lifetime of experiences and memories that influenced my music in my daily life. And I just hope this documentary can show you and give you a piece of what I got here on the mountaintop. Next time on King of the Mountain, Baragon discusses dorm life, rap battles, and the team on the King of the Mountain. You know, coming up, being from Newburgh and all that, there was like a lot of rappers. And you know, when I was 13, 14, you know what I mean? We battled a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't really nothing serious. Like, it wasn't no URL, King of the Dot type stuff. It was just, you know, your mom's fat, you're too black, you know what I mean? So I come up on that, but <clears throat> when I came here, it was like, it was my first time in a real battle and I had nothing written down, I had no punchlines, I was just like, you know what, people were calling me out. They was also, yeah, Herbert's scared, he's scared to battle. I just, you know, I really wasn't there, just didn't feel like it, you know what I mean? But I came up here and there was this dude named Bryson and him and his little crew or whatever, they was also, oh, he, he can't rap, he's whack. So, you know, I came in here with my crew, it was, it was Darren, it was Brent, it was a couple of heads, you know what I mean? We just we just had a little freestyle battle, you know what I mean? I didn't really have no rhymes ready. I was just, I didn't want to get called a punk no more, you feel what I'm saying? As I look back on the battle, I see that I didn't really have a lot to worry about. I wasn't very good back then, but neither was he. And some of the lines he was using were kind of suspect. Yo, pause. It was like, what was crazy about it was I didn't know it was really being recorded like that. And then, you know, a day or two later, I have people running up to me talking about, oh, you look like Elmo and saying Elmo and Sickle. And, and I'm like, yo, how'd you hear that? And they're like, yo, John has John has the footage. So, you know, it went around. That's how it, the, the, the knowledge of me being a rapper really started. That's kind of how I, you know what I mean? That's how I found myself here at the school. I was the dude that beat the best rapper. So, you know what I mean? That, that was my first time really getting any kind of famous from rap, you know what I mean? So it was, it was dope, man, you know, what else could I really say? Although it wasn't a big deal at the time, this event drastically changed the way I was viewed at the school. Of the event, John Paul Viteri has this to say. And I remember one day my, my, my brother Jose he goes, yo, 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 you heard that, uh, you heard that, that, um, that bar that Herbert spit? And I was like, nah, what, what is it? I'll never forget this line. He showed me the video. He said there were, there were two white girls. Um, there was Jessica Sickle. She was the baddest white girl probably that I have ever met. Jessica was a very, very beautiful friend of mine who helped me get acquainted when I first came to the school. 
Our relationship grew so strong that we were prom dates at the end of the year. I'd like to take the time out to thank her for her positive impact and to tell her that I miss her very much. Jessica Sickle, she was, she was bad. And then her best friend was Megan. Megan was her friend. And um, I remember, I'll never, I'll never ever forget this line that uh, that Herbert spit. He said, he said, you cannot get Megan, you cannot get sickle. You look like Elmo. You need to be tickled. Then I was like, oh hell no! I was dying. I mean, it was crazy. That was that was huge. And I remember, you know, Big Bad. I mean, he really got his name there. He was really making a name for himself at school because of that rapping thing. And I was like, nah, I gotta do this. So yeah, you know what I mean? That was like my first real battle. My next real battle, you know, on, on any type of big scale was the whole Freestyle Friday thing. And I actually freestyled and it didn't turn out the way I would've hoped, but it was definitely a great experience anyway. And I'd like to thank, you know, Bryson, MOB, everybody that was there, you know what I mean? We just had fun and it was just real cool. So that's, that's one of the good memories. This was the first room I had. 309 and you know like I said after the battle people knew me as an MC you know what I mean the best MC on campus is only like two of us so it's not really that big of a deal but you know I was I was just the best rapper and then the other guy Bryson he ended up having to leave so it was just me you know what I mean and then second semester I got a roommate his name was Al T but he goes by the name of Greedy Keys and he made crazy beats he was more out there for the beat making you know what I mean I was a little more nervous with my talent, but he you know, he he really helped bring the the charisma out of me. So every now and again, we would get in here. We were known as TS, the trendsetters. We would get in here and we would you know kick some rhymes, freestyle, whatever, just wild out. You know what I mean? And that that played a large role in me coming up because it was just it was just me getting to like perform and getting comfortable doing it around other people. You know what I mean? So it was definitely a great experience here in 309. Being in the boys' dorm had its downsides. For one, there were no girls. Also, we didn't have money or cars, so there wasn't too much for us to do other than basketball or rap. I was a little too fat to play basketball, but I could certainly kick around to liven things up. And on that particular night, we all got together in 309, and I kicked a little freestyle before we all got in trouble. Okay, so we're here with Kara's one no. and we're talking about the legendary group that was here um, at one point and we just want to know um, do you know through myths and legends who were members of this legendary team? Yes, yes I do. <clears throat> Starting with the king. <clears throat> this is the king, Herbert Golding. Okay, better known as? Um, Big, Big Bad Baragon. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Who's Who else? Uh, Let's start with the print. Let's go to the princess of princess. the team. Not that I was with him. He's real. Okay, there you go. Right. There she is. Princess. Who else is there? Lawrence McKenzie. Okay. Eric Rory. Oh, he's right under LJ. Mm -hmm. What a surprise. And? Jonathan Williams. Yep, there were two more. Emil and Javion, but... Uh, They're not on this picture. They didn't make it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Not criminal Karen Minded is well, Criminal Minded, one of my favorite albums. I'm not, I don't. Think Actually, I didn't for that. like it at all. All right. All right. The team, spelled with sevens instead of T's, was a compilation of the popular kids in the 2010 class. At first, it was seven of us, then six, then five, then four. We got into quite a bit of trouble. The members were myself, Eric, LJ. Javion, Jonathan, Emil, and Izzy. 
Together, we provided our school with one of its most memorable years and gave them memories that they will never have again. As a more popular member of my high school group, the team spelled with sevens instead of T's, it was imperative that I set a good example in every way possible. And as I grew older, I saw that example settling in. I can't count to you the number of times that Izzy's called me in tears, telling me how much he appreciates the impact I had on his life. Recently, Eric and I were talking, and he said, you know what, Baragon, without you, I wouldn't be the man I am today. Forget the strong four, forget Clippers Nation, forget everything I am. You made me who I am. And Eric said that, you can ask him. And Jonathan, Jonathan called me recently too. He said, hey, you know what? I know we don't talk as much as we should, but without a doubt, you are the king of the team. And the team was just such an important part of my life because it was one of the, you know, you had a little cruise and clicks before, but since we were so compressed here in this small school, we got to see the immediate advantages of our popularity. We had kids do homework for us. You know, we, we had great sleepovers. We went off campus together and we got a lot of girls, but one girl in particular stood out to me. Hmm. Yo, when we return, Baragon talks about his love, education, and influences on the school. I swing here, but I swing along. As you can see, I have no female partner to accompany me. But at one point I did. Probably the only serious part of the documentary, but I fell in love here. So long ago. I think maybe, maybe I was a different person, you know? Maybe there was something about me that stayed here that explains why I never fell in love like that again. She was beautiful. She is beautiful. She was white. She is white. She loved me. She did love me. She isn't anymore. I don't blame her. Look why I've become. I'm famous. I have my own documentary. I'm not a regular person anymore. I let the fame get to my head. I just wish I didn't let it get to my heart. I know I'm too old to be feeling the same way about you. And I know I'm too ugly to have a camera this close to my face, but I just want you to know that whenever I hear a love song, I think about you. Whenever I write a love song, I think about you. And this, all this is for you. I'm trying to show you that I'm worth something. And, you know, if I sell a million records, if I do world tours and I still don't have you, it's not worth it. So, I just hope to be a man worthy of your love again. And I'll do whatever it takes to get there. When it came to education, I can't say I was the most concerned. But, nah, that was it. I really wasn't concerned about schoolwork too much. I guess the best part of the school was not the girls, not the rapping, not the white girls, but it's the love and respect I still get. Whenever I step foot on campus, all the kids run up to me and say, hey, when is your album coming out? Where can I buy some merchandise? How can I be like you? And I tell them, kids, stay in school, eat your vegetables, do your homework. And the teachers will run up to me with tears in their eyes and say, hey, I miss you so much and I love you and I wish you were still here and I wish you could be more than my student. I wish you could be my son. And I smile at them and I say, ma'am or sir, I am your son. What do I think when I hear the name Baragon? That's a good question. That is a real good question. I just really wish I had a good answer for it. 
But uh, the name Baragon, Baragon, damn. Um, you know, when I hear that name, I hear a good rapper. I hear a real good rapper. I know I don't look like I know a good rapper, but that's a good rapper. That's what I, that's what I think when I hear the name Baragon. When I think of Baragon, I think of the Yeah! Um, when I think about Big Bad Baragon, he's probably probably the best next up and coming rapper out here. You know, doing his thing on his grind all every day, 24/7. You know, so it's hot. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Hot rapper. Go ahead. When I think of Baragon, I think of a good time. Yeah. When I think of Baragon, I think of a musical genius who is a wonder beyond our time. When I think of the name Baragon, I think of somebody fearless. What do I think when I hear the name Baragon? Well, I think of a guy that likes to go around spending his time making everyone laugh, whether it's the right time or not. But hey, I like to laugh, personally. Um, what I think of when I hear the name Baragon is creativity and something new. So, beautiful Brazilian woman, okay. when you think of the name Baragon, what comes to mind? A lovable person. Baragon equals success. Mm. When I think I of Big Bad and Baragon, I think of only the best rapper alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's you know what I think when I hear the name Baragon? Someone who's going to be successful in the future. When I think of the name Baragon, I think of caring. Uh, when I think yeah. about oh. Big Bad Baragon, <laughs> he's like an inspiration in my life. He's been there. He's all in all. He likes me. He's real. He's got the, he's got the realest lines. He flows real hard. He goes, he goes. But uh, he's going to be big one day. If not, he's got pretty work. But yeah, inspiration. Uh, Baragon? Dope rapper that's gonna hold it down for New York and his own. Throw that ASAP. So, that's what this place means to me, man. And I'm gonna work hard to do its name justice, even though I can't say its name. I'm gonna go as hard as I can to make sure I give back to this school and these people as much as it and they gave to me. My name is Big Bad Baragon, and I love you. Good night. I, you know what I mean? How did I meet Jake? <sighs> Crazy story, man. So we was in math class and, and you know, a fight broke out. Crazy fight. And some dude was coming at me with a shank. Like he made a shank. You know how it is in prison. He made a shank out of like some rubber bands and some, some old bread. And you know what happened. <laughs> and I thought, oh, it's over for me, man. You know what I mean? I got, I got a wife and kids outside. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't afford to get stabbed up because you know what I mean? You get stabbed in prison, you die. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the the doctors can't really help you out like that. You know what I mean? So then Jake, he come he comes from behind me, pause, and he he has an even bigger shiv, pause, made of carrots, and 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 toilet paper, and he just ices that guy right there. And I'm like, yo, what's your name, man? He's like, yo, I'm Jiggy Jake, man. I heard about you. You know what I mean? You a real character. So I'm like, I like word. You know? So from there we dapped it up, and then he said, yo, you know I make beats, right? And I'm like, nah, I didn't know that. I don't even know you, man. So he's like, all right, cool. Come to my room at 5 o'clock. So 5 o'clock came. Went to his room. He has some crazy stuff, man. It's just some crazy wild beats. And they, there was just two women. And I don't even know what they was doing there. But they was just, he, he just, they, they was some of the best looking women I've ever seen. And they was just making them food in, in their in they, in they panties. That's all they had on, panties and some slippers, man. They was making him some, like, I don't even know what it was, but it was delicious. And, you know, I had some of it. It was great. And then from there, we just worked on the album. The album should be coming out sometime soon, man. It's going to be going to be great. And that's how I met Jake. Okay. <laughs> Yo, if you don't get your fat ass up and start right, whatever, whatever, whatever. 
It's your brother man's pleasure to bring you another man's treasure Much better than the competitors who were never as clever or measured up to me They want none with me, I'm so sharp they tell scissors not to run with me Shout out to my brothers B, that's the double T